there's so much pressure to like be happy and to live at the fullest amount of your potential. It's like, I don't know, I feel like once you have that thing, like art and creativity to serve, like, who cares if you're happy? Like, it doesn't even matter. Fuck yeah. Yeah. That's, I fucking wrote a blog about it. <laughs> like, Fuck. just do your fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Stay alive. Yeah. Like, life matters. That's because once it's off, once it's gone, then you don't exist anymore. Yeah. So, like, that's like the <laughs> ultimate goal survival. Yeah. And then just like, happiness comes and goes. If you devote your life to happiness, it's like, devoting your life to like finding whatever your drug of choice is and just being high all the time. It's like if they built a fucking infinite happiness machine, you'd have to sit in it and like just get like fucking serotonin pumped into yeah, your brain yeah, all day so you'd be like, oh, I'm so happy. Exactly. Like, <laughs> this is what I wanted. <laughs> oh, that's what people do. That's exactly what they do. They like, they, uh, they're not, whatever, like, they're not feeling happy because they're fat, so they get liposuction. They're not feeling happy because they're sad, so they get antidepressants. The guy's not feeling happy because him and his wife aren't having sex anymore, so he buys Viagra. It's like, just give me the pill. I want to be happy. TV says that that's what a happy person is. I want to be like him, so what do I got to do? And it's like, fuck that, dude. Like, think of something better than yourself, like, like music or like, uh... I don't know, being a doctor or fucking just have like a purpose in your life that is meaningful and like fuck, fuck being happy. It's great if you do get to be happy sometimes, but like it's so not a prerequisite of like living a good life. Like, you know, it's just well, ridiculous. Like trying to stay in the sunlight all the time, like the pursuit of being in day sunlight all the time. Yeah. It's just like, what, if you do that for a fucking couple of years and suddenly you. I wish it would get dark. <laughs> it's the fucking balance that gives it the value. Yeah, that's that kind of Taoist thing. It's like, you're fucking kidding yourself if you think that anything can be just ultra consistent the same all the time. Like, I mean, I guess it can. I guess that's what you're saying. Is that, like, we're starting to see that it can. Like, because of, like, the computer. And well, yeah, they're not happy, but, like, it can be so consistent that you lose like your emotions and your ability to like form meaningful bonds because nothing like takes anything away from you. Nothing is uh, strong enough of a pull on your life to like change you. Like people didn't get divorced before because they would fucking die if they did. Like, you know, because they were so poor and they needed a mom and yeah. they needed a dad and they needed the kids doing chores Work. and like yeah. they, is like no time to even think about stupid bullshit that like breaks up couples these days. Is I don't know. The only time I feel like content or like pleasant is after like a super hard day of work and like getting to eat like good food, you know, when you're so hungry and it yeah. just feels so good to eat or like being at like a show or just seeing some like insanely like moving art that someone like really thought about and put a lot into and like you get it. Like just feelings like that or just like meeting a girl and like getting along. Oh no, kitty. Very bad. <laughs> yeah, meeting a girl getting along. Like, but like having security and like having money to buy everything I want like that it's like cool They're like oh yeah I can go to Starbucks again <laughs> I'm never like when I'm sitting there drinking the iced latte I'm never like oh yeah this feels so good like I'm so happy unless I haven't had one for like six months well, or something well, well, it's funny because I've never liked Starbucks so much mm -hmm. until we started this tour yeah and now it's like this beacon of like they have vegetarian food and coffee that's gonna fucking wake me up yes yeah. and, and, and like I really like Starbucks now. yeah it's like at home I'm just like Starbucks khakis fucking CD 1.9 <laughs> fucking what are they what am I gonna go in there and listen to some fucking Kenny G uh, shove a latte <laughs> in my ass <laughs> but, like, but now it's like Starbucks it's so like not, it has nothing to do with like American, it's just like, it's just survival. It's just I'm out here, I feel like shit, I'm tired, I'm sick, I'm, I can't poo, I can't fucking open my eyes, I'm just like, I have it. Yeah, and you it's like, know what you're gonna get. Yeah, and you just like, you seek it out, and it's cool, and it's like, but there's such a fine line between that 
and, and all of a sudden waking up one day and realizing you're a creature of habit. And there's like uh, these books I used to read, Tom Brown books, he's a Native American guy, and he always said he's like, kind of more from, uh, he's more leaning in the Eric Angstrom perspective, like anything you do more than once, anything you do the same exact way more than once, you might as well be dead while you're doing it. <laughs> He said, it's, there's no point to repeating the same moment in life. He's like, yeah, anything. He's like, even if you brush your teeth the same way in the morning. He's like, <laughs> he's like, if you ever catch yourself all of a sudden driving to work and you wake up and you're like, he's like, you've all been there. He's like, you don't actually remember how you even got there. Yeah. Somehow you're just on your way to work in the car and you're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm dressed. My clothes are on, my teeth are brushed, I'm showered, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hungry. <laughs> All right, fine. He's like, he's like, that's hours of your fucking life just gone. You might as well have been dead. Like, that's what? the revelation that made me snap and quit my job and move out of my apartment, break up with my girlfriend, and start smoking methamphetamines. <laughs> <laughs> it's looked how good that turned out. Well, yeah, I guess I went, I went from that to fucking the epitome of garbage. Then I met Homestyles here. And now I'm chilling in Turkey, drinking a beer at 11.45, talking yeah. about life. Transition is always <laughs> difficult in people's lives, especially young people's lives. But everybody, I mean, when you try and make a major transition, it might seem pretty horrible at the time. But it always fucking, you know, you know, man. You know, when your life is that boring, sometimes it takes fucking crystal meth and job quitting to fucking snap you out of your fucking You gotta shit. turn it to shit before you can figure out what's gonna turn it to yeah. gold. But even then... It's not going to be happy all day long every day. I would want that. Fuck that, man. Prozac life? It's fucking perspective, though. You know, it's like... Like, I, I know where people are coming from when they say that. It's like, you know, I want to get to a point where I feel like I am in a good place and, like, I have set things up for myself so that... You know, whatever the person's goals might be, like having a family or whatever, and having a house, and like then doing that life that they envision. Well, just to them, that's that bigger thing. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, but it's just like not really. It, I don't know. What's man. the point? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just based on TV and movies. The fucking the, the, two, the pile of kids, the wife, the the dog, the garage, the white picket well, fence. Well, that's just based off of what he was saying about survival. Because originally you had to have the wife and the kids, and we'll fuck the dog, but... Well, that's why traveling is good, is because you meet people that weren't exposed to that shit their whole lives. And they've got the different perspective that we can. Like, on the train, when that girl said, the reason that I live my life or whatever is to make my parents happy... And it is such a mind blower to all yeah. of us. Yeah. Like Sarah actually got like offended. <laughs> like, but there's really like a huge segment of the population that is like it, and it's not even strange to them. It's like I live to honor my parents. Like, they That's brought me up. Thing, like, I guess so. like, it's so foreign, but so interesting. Like, I don't agree with it, like personally, but like just the that exists, like, that kind of shit is what I hope to find out on this tour. Or just like Thailand. I mean, we loving, loving their king and their leader, and just having a total, like, trust and faith and adoration of their, of their political power. It's like, we have no, nothing now. We're all, every man for himself in America. Well, every man looking after his own fucking ass and his own little personal whatever, and it's like, it's so, like, I don't know, it's so... Sad. It's just like everybody's and everybody's miserable. America's <laughs> fucking done. <laughs> like there's gonna be a war or something. So it might not be started by us, but like something's gonna come to America, and America's not even gonna last a quarter of the Roman Empire. Where's your heart of something. darkness quote? I wanna close <laughs> off this conversation with that one, heart of darkness. and then say that we wrote a natural death before we read that. And that we're as smart as Joseph Conrad. <laughs> or maybe we're just fucking hacks who like think we're original, but we <laughs> just think of the same shit that every existentialist already thought of. Exactly. Well, there's four minutes of tape left. Can you find it? <clears throat> yeah, it should be in here. Five minutes later, I'm pretending we're dead all day. Got it? You want to read this, Eric? <laughs> I'll read it. Read it aloud. Okay. 
You've had all these same thoughts, Gary, many a time. The mysteries of a universe. Wait, this song, I think we were both suffering from the same crushing metaphysical crisis. The mysteries of a universe made of drops of fire and clods of mud do not concern us in the least. The fate of a humanity condemned ultimately to perish from cold is not worth troubling about. If you take it to heart, it becomes an unendurable tragedy. If you believe in improvement, you must weep, for the attained perfection must end in cold, darkness, and silence. In a dispassionate view, the ardor for reform, improvement for virtue, for knowledge, and even for beauty, is only a vain sticking up for appearances, as though one were anxious about the cut of one's clothes in a community of blind men. <laughs>